Hello all. So this is the second video whose job is to introduce a bunch of concepts. The previous video introduced you to the image and the kernel of a linear map. And both of those are examples of what are called subspaces. And so before we actually say anything about them, I just want to tell you about the general concept of what a subspace is because the word subspace will be showing up again and again and again for the rest of the course. So to remind you, the kernel of A is the set of all vectors x such that ax equals zero. And the image of A is the set of those vectors b for which the equations ax equals b are solvable. And both of these are examples of subspaces. So a subspace is a set of vectors in Rn. If you're a computer science person, think about it as a, think about it roughly as a big list or a big database of vectors, but to be careful, it is an infinite list. So you might more prefer to think about it geometrically. A subspace is something like a line or a plane. It's a geometric object that takes up a certain amount of space in Rn. And there are axioms. The zero vector is in our subspace. Whenever x and y are two vectors in our subspace, so is their sum, x plus y. And whenever x is in our subspace and k is a scalar, then k times x is also in our subspace. So here come some examples and some non-examples. So here are three pictures of the plane R2. And I've drawn some subsets of R2 in blue. So in the left picture, I've got this blue square grid. In this middle picture, I've got this blue cone. Um, you're supposed to interpret this as stretching off to infinity, although obviously the slide is finite in area. And on the third picture, I've got this straight line. Pause your video for a moment to think about which of these are subspaces. Oops. Ah, sorry, I planned to answer that question. So oh, only, so the third one is a subspace and the others are not. So let's see the conditions on the third one. First of all, the line does go through zero. So zero is in our subspace. If I have two vectors on this line and I take their sum, Here's the sum of those two vectors. That will also be a vector on this line. And if I take a vector on this line and I rescale it by a scalar, then it will be on the line as well. On the other hand, the left picture and the middle picture are not subspaces. If you look at the left picture, you'll see that if I take this vector, and I rescale it by the scalar, say, one half, to get a vector of one half the length, that vector is not a blue dot. It's not in the subspace. And similarly here, if I take a vector like this, and I multiply it by a scalar like negative one to get a vector over here, I have left the blue subspace. So subspaces are things where you stay in them by addition and by multiplying by a scalar. And let's just check why kernel and image obey these axioms. So first of all, a times zero equals zero. So zero is in the kernel. If x is in the kernel, so ax is zero, and y is in the kernel, so ay is zero, then a times x plus y is ax plus ay is zero plus zero, which is zero. And then finally, multiplication by scalars. If ax is zero, then a times kx is also zero. That was the verification for kernel. Let's do the same verification for image. Um, zero is in the image. So for image, we'll look at the output of our matrix. We're looking and seeing whether we can solve the equations ax equals b. We can, we can get zero to be an output because a times zero is zero. If B is an output and C is an output, then B plus C is also an output by putting in the inputs X and Y. And then finally, if B is an output 
that every scalar multiple of b is also an output by using the input kx. So that's checking that curdo and image are subspaces. One of the main ways we describe a subspace is by describing it as the span of a list of vectors. This already came up when we were talking about image in the previous lecture. So the span of vectors v1, v2, blah, 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 vk is all those vectors that can be written as linear combinations where we multiply the vi's by various scalars and add the result together. And to repeat what we said about image in the previous lecture, this is also the image of the matrix whose columns are v1 to vk. Now the same, uh, and let's, let me use a little prop to show you a picture of this. So here is a two-dimensional plane. And so if we are going to span it, that means we're going to give a bunch of vectors on the plane such that every vector on the plane is a linear combination of those vectors. So I just grabbed some props. So here is a vector lying on my plane. Here is another vector lying on my plane. And every other vector on this plane is a linear combination of these two vectors. I can get to any other point on this plane by adding together some multiple of this vector and some multiple of this vector. Um, I could use many other vectors to achieve the same thing. If I turn the two vectors this way, I've also spanned the plane. And I don't have to use just two. This is a two-dimensional plane. So two vectors is the easy, small, short way to do it but it could also be the span of three vectors. Every vector on this plane is a linear combination of these three vectors as well. So here in equations is the same sort of thing that I was saying a moment ago with physical props. If I look at the plane x plus y plus z equals zero in three dimensional space, that's the span of these two vectors over here. You can check for yourself, any vector x, y, z, where x plus y plus z equals zero is a linear combination of those two vectors. But it's also the span of these two vectors here. It's also the span again, of these two vectors here. And using two vectors is efficient, but I can be not efficient if I want to be not efficient. I can also write it as the span of these three vectors. There are tons of different ways I can write the same plane as the span of a list of vectors. And our theme for the next lecture will be looking at an inefficient representation like this last one and seeing how to turn it into an efficient representation. So that's what's coming next. But what I want to just talk about for now is I gave you the definition of a subspace and geomet, and I talked about how you can see it as the span of a bunch of vectors. And uh, I should have said this earlier, geometrically, if we're thinking in three-dimensional space, a subspace is something like a line or a plane or the whole space or just uh, the vector zero uh, with the caveat that it's a line through zero, a plane through zero, um, or just the point zero because our conditions include, by definition, that zero is in our subspace. So a subspace could be something like a line through the origin or a plane through the origin, et cetera. Okay, so where we will pick up in the next lecture is talking about how to think about the different ways we could write a subspace as a span of a list of vectors. And in particular, how we could detect that a list of vectors was needlessly long and how we could make it shorter. See you there.